Hey Blockheads, I'm Whitney Kent here in Sheboygan, Wisconsin at the Sheboygan Youth Sailing Center. So everybody learns at a young age how to tie a bowline and we're going to talk about why it can be better to tie an eye splice at the end of your line to make a loop instead. Uh, one good reason to do that is because when you're splicing, when you have a bowline, you're going to have a lot of obstruction through the block. Whereas with an eye splice, this is going to run a lot cleaner. You also sacrifice a lot less strength with, a, with an eye splice than you will with a bowline. All right, so we're going to go through the supplies that you need to make a good splice. If you are looking to start learning how to splice, you can buy one of these splicing kits. This one is from Samson, uh, but a lot of the main rope manufacturers are going to make that. It's got a variety of tools in it, and one of the things it comes with is a pusher. Uh, this you can use to literally push the line uh, through itself. You'll see how later. Uh, it's also going to come with a, an assortment of fids. So this is a tubular fid. Uh, when you are reading instructions and something refers to a fid length, this would be a full fid length. Uh, they also make wire fids, which are half of a fid length. Uh, we don't have any of those here, but that's going to be for longer line. Uh, they're all labeled with the length of line that they're used for. So before you start splicing, you're going to want to know what size line you're using. This is a knife, we're going to use that. You're going to want to have a sharpie around. Uh, you're going to definitely want a roll of electrical tape. A lighter is handy. Uh, this is a homemade puller that we fashioned, so it's basically just made out of wire, and this is just a little tube handle, so I think the cost of this was got to be less than 50 cents. A scissors. So for today, we're going to be splicing, this is 5 16 uh, Dyneema. So this is 12 strands, and we're going to go ahead and do a lock, locking eye splice with this. So the tools I'm going to use are my 5 16 fid. It's one of the littler ones. Uh, we're going to use electrical tape and a Sharpie along with a knife. So on a 420, you might find this on your halyards or on your bridle. Uh, on a laser, it could be on the control lines attached to a block. So one trick you can do is make a longer eye splice, and then you can kind of luggage tag it on, which I'll demonstrate at the end when we have one. And, uh, or you can splice it right onto a block or right onto your traveler bar or a shackle. So this is often referred to as hollow braid because when you push it together to kind of loosen up the strands, you're gonna be able to see right through the line. All right, so what we're gonna do, if your line has been used before, it's often been pulled really tight and sometimes when you buy it from the factory, they pull the stretch out of it. So to make your life easier as we go, you're going to push the line together, kind of loosen up the strands because we're going to wind up weaving things through them. So what we're going to do, first step, figure out how big you want your splice to be. So if we're going to go with an eye splice about this size, what we're going to do is take the marker, make a mark all the way around the line where both ends come together. Make sure you can see it all around all right so the first step you're going to have your standing part of the line which is the longer part and the tail of the line which is what we're going to start with here so we have our two marks what we're going to do connect the tail to the fid there's a hollow end of the fid so we're going to put the tail right in there you're going to want to put it in there pretty well so that it doesn't come out as we pull it through the line Gonna tape, take a piece of tape and kind of wind it tightly around the tail of the line just to keep it in the fit. You want this to be pretty tight so that it's kind of streamlined so that it makes it easier to pull through. So what we're gonna do, make our eye again, find your marks. So we got one here and one here. I'm gonna run it through this mark, all right? So I'm gonna make this longer. And what you're going to do, put the fid through the line. Careful not to run it through any strands, just between all the strands. And it's going to come out all right, like that. And you're going to want six strands on either side of the line. You're going to see each individual strand here. One, two, three, four, five. And then there's a sixth one in there. And then pull it through. Kind of work it around that tape. So if it catches, just pull it out and pull it through like this, okay. So as much as you can, you want to keep it from catching on the tape because if you are twisting the strands or pulling them apart in any way, you're gonna be uh, weakening the line. 
All right, so now we're gonna take this off the, untape this end of the line from the fin. Pulling that off, all right. So now what we're gonna do, the tail is through. We're gonna take the end of the standing end of the line. If your line is a little bit longer than this, that's all right. Sometimes the standing end of the line is pretty long. Put that into the fit just like we did with the other piece. All right, and we're gonna wind the tape around. Should have cut that off. All right, so now we have our other mark on the line and it's gonna be on the tail now, all right? So without twisting the line, we're gonna do the same thing. Loosen up where your mark is and then push the fit through between the strands. All right, so now we're not catching any of the strands. There's six on either side. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, pushing that through, trying not to catch any of the strands on the tape, pulling it through. All right, so now we can make the loop the size that we want. We're gonna pull that through, pull that through so you have a nice, neat, locking splice here. You can see it looks like it tucks in between. All right, so now this loop is not gonna come out. So the strength of the knot of the splice comes from the berry of the tail, but this locking part that we just did is going to keep it from pulling out. So you can put some pressure on that. All right, the next step is going to be taking the tail of the line and tucking it into that hollow braid. All right, so we're gonna loosen that up a little bit and then what we're gonna do, see how long the tail is, all right, and make another mark on the line so that we kinda know how long we're gonna feed the tail into the line, making a mark. And this is just to make your life a little bit easier so that you're not guessing at the end of the process. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, still got the fit on the standing end, so I'm gonna take that off and switch that to the tail because the tail is what we're gonna bury, so. Now I'm gonna leave that alone. Get a fresh piece of tape. All right, so what I'm gonna do is go about two notches, two strands below where I started, the, or where the eye splice ends. Work that open a little bit and insert the fid in between the strands. Again, we're going in between the strands, not splitting any of the strands. And then you're gonna work your fid down in between the lines. So you can see it's starting to get thick there. That's where the fit is going. Kind of like an accordion on the fit. And you're pushing it and you want to keep the, the line from twisting at all. You want to keep it going nice and straight. You don't want to lose any of the strength by having it twist. So as we're getting to the other end of the fit, I'm going to put the tail back in. This one you definitely want to make sure it's secure because you're going to be pulling it all the way through that middle of the line. So I'm going to tape it up pretty well. Again, just a loop or two of tape. As little tape as you can, just to keep it nice and thin as it's going through. All right. Now I'm gonna work it down. We haven't gotten yet to our mark, it's down here. So, gonna keep working it through. So as you're getting to where the tail is going into the line, you're gonna wanna go slow. Be careful just not to pull it out of the end of the fit. So the other end of the fit has gotten to this mark. So I'm going to bend the line and let the fit kind of exit on the same side as we went in and pull that out so that now I can bring the tail through the core of the line. So as I'm pulling, going slow, making sure not to pull that out, bringing the tail in. All right. As you can see, as I'm pushing this and pulling the fit through, I'm pushing this up to bring that tail right into the line. All right. And then I'm gonna keep pulling it until that disappears. All right. So now we have the tail of the line where the fit is attached. So I'm going to detach the fit here. All right. And what we're gonna do is mark a few strands that we're going to cut off so that we get a nice taper under the cover to keep the line from abruptly ending. And you will see why. So what we're gonna do 
is start at the bottom, mark one strand, and then mark its pair right next to it. And then going straight up the line, you're gonna skip the next one, and then mark every other. So skipping that one, marking this one. All right, and you're gonna do that three times. So skipping this one, marking this one, so that you mark six strands. All right, so those are the strands we're gonna cut. So I'm going to pull that out of the line. All right. Pulling that out. Okay. So now we're going to cut those strands off. That's going to make the line thinner so that it has a nice taper to it when we milk the cover back over it. All right. The sharper your scissors are, the easier this part is going to be. Remember to only mark, only cut the tapered or the marked strands. Those should be the ones that are sticking out anyway. All right, where's my other one? Here it is. And you want to keep things as neat as possible. So the neater the splice is, the stronger it's going to be. All right. So once you have all of your strands cut. The line is going to be thinner on the end because there's only going to be six strands left on the end of the line, 12 strands up here. So we have now to pull the cover back down over the line. And this is called milking the cover back down. All right. So <laughs> I didn't get it right that time. If you wind up with the tail sticking out, you can always move the, pro the end process up a little bit. So we'll cut the line here and mark new strands. So marking a strand here and its pair right there, skipping one, marking there, skipping one. Okay. And pulling the mark strands out of the line. Only the marked ones. All right, once you have all the strands cut, oh, this is still not one. And then as you're pulling the cover tight, you're gonna just keep milking it down until all of the core disappears inside the line. So now we have a completed eye splice. It's locked here, it's not gonna pull out. It's gonna retain around 90% to 100% of the strength of the line. It's gonna run cleanly through your blocks and it's gonna be a little bit better for your boat than the bowline.